fought from dialogues. And it's a, a hybrid event. Um, actually, we're going to have four kind of groups participating. We've got you in Glasgow. We've got the communities in Cusco in the Andes in Peru. We've got communities in Kenya um, in semi-arid forests. And then we've got online participants. So it's like a four-way four hybrid event. So let's hope it works out. Right. My name is Christina Swidder. I work for IED Institute for Environment Development. Um, I'm a researcher there. And I'm going to provide just a bit of introduction to the topic um, and to the dialogues that we're in Peru and Kenya. Okay. Uh, first of all, what are indigenous food systems? Well, indigenous peoples um, uh, amount to about uh, nearly a half a billion people across 90 countries. So indigenous food systems span really, really wide diversity of, of ecosystems. Um, they include um, dryland pastoralists, small scale farmers, fisher folk, hunter gatherers, Arctic dwellers, and, and many others. So they're very diverse, uh, but they also have some uh, common features, agroecological and highly biodiverse and regenerative. So they sustain uh, critical ecosystem services for resilience to climate change, like uh, water in mountains, like um, rich agrobiology. Um, and these also important for resilience, not only at the community level, but also at national level and at global level, because you know, these crop diversity is important to conserve for the whole um, agriculture worldwide. Um, and these um, indigenous people's food systems are also very low in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. They don't use or use very few fossil fuel based um, chemical inputs. They also provide important carbon sinks um, from, for example, tropical forests, uh, dryland forests, natural pastures and soils. And they're, they're very much localized, so they have low transport related emissions and they're circular, so they have low waste. Um, and these food systems are, are ancestral, they're, they're sustained by indigenous people's traditional knowledge, by their, their cultural and spiritual values, and their customs. And these indigenous food systems are, are really critical uh, for um, efforts to transform uh, wider food systems, which emit uh, a lot of greenhouse gases, they account for about 30% of all greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so um, they're also, indigenous people's food systems provide lessons for reducing emissions, but also for be, transforming to more equitable food systems. So the first case we're going to learn from is from um, the Andean Potato Park in Peru. So this is a Quechua landscape, uh, Quechua indigenous communities collectively govern a landscape of about 10,000 hectares in the high Andes. And um, they've had a lot of impacts from increased temperatures, um, especially soil have increased um, and they've had you know, more erratic rainfall. And as a result of this um, warming of the soil, the farmers have to keep going up and up and planting higher and higher up the mountain until there's no, there's no land left. So the planting line for potatoes, which is their main staple crop, has gone up by 200 meters in the last 30 years. Um, and as a response to these big impacts that they're facing, um, they are conserving and celebrating Andean agricultural biodiversity. They have a very, very high diversity of native potatoes and other Andean crops, and they are revitalizing the limited biocultural heritage based on this indigenous knowledge and also linked to science. So this approach is very much rooted in their Andean cosmovision, the concept and Andean values of reciprocity, equilibrium and solidarity, which is with nature and also in society. And these values have ensured um, that biodiversity has been conserved and has ensured their food security despite challenges of climate change, right? 
the challenges of COVID-19. Right, so after Peru, we'll, we'll go to Kenya. And there, um, the communities are uh, called Rabai. It's a, um, a community of the Mijigenda uh, indigenous group. And they have sacred Kaya forest landscape in coastal Kenya. So these are Kaya, some of the Kaya elders that conserve the, these forests. And these forests form a really important part of their food system and of resilience to climate. So as this is a, a semi-arid area, they've had uh, been impacted by uh, reduced rainfall and water shortages and also increased peasants. Their response has been to diversify their crops to, to indigenous varieties and uh, land races, to strengthen conservation of the Kaya forests and to um, establish a biocultural heritage territory collectively governed similar or inspired by the potato park. Um, so before handing over to them, I'm just going to quickly present some of the key methods that came out of the fork to farm dialogues. Um, the potato park of Peru, uh, the dialogue was facilitated by an NGO, Asociación Andes, and by the indigenous experts that they work with. Brought to more than 200 Quechua farmers, uh, from 22 communities across three provinces. So this included communities from the Potato Park, but also the Basque Park in Ares, in the Cusco region, and then commu Andean communities from Apurimac uh, region as well. Uh, and the dialogues involved community leaders, indigenous organizations, and women's organizations. Uh, they tried to involve uh, city governments. Uh, it was too difficult with the political turmoil elections that are still ongoing in Peru, and also because of the serious uh, COVID challenges. But they will use the outcomes from the dialogue, as, from this dialogue, as a basis for dialogue with the, um, city governments. So the messages that have come out are uh, also aimed at uh, not only at the local policymakers, but also all food and climate change policymakers. And I'm going to um, read these key messages. So uh, the communities based on these dialogues are calling on policies to recognize, protect and return the lands and territories of indigenous peoples, which were stolen by colonial nation states elites and continue robbed by powerful land grabbers and multinational corporations. Without land rights, we have no chance of survival. Second, they call on policymakers to recognize indigenous people's rights, knowledge system, and cultural and spiritual values as essential to transforming into food systems, trust and resilience, and to provide real solutions to the current crime, biodiversity loss, ecosystem um, degradation, and climate chaos. Um, they, indigenous people's food systems are regenerative systems and are therefore a game-changing solution for a climate resilient food system. Um, and their promotion requires implementation of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and the dismantling of uh, systemic forms of racism and oppression that continues to support land biopsy, food and nutrition insecurity, um, biodiversity erosion, gender inequality, and cult genocide. Uh, they emphasize that indigenous women should be leaders in the uh, food systems transformation that is truly resilient and equitable, and that the farm approaches must be led by youth in order to provide real transformation um, as they will become the leaders of tomorrow's food systems. Um, and youth must participate fully in community decision processes to learn from elders. Um, there's a need to promote decolonizing indigenous-led research to create evidence and solutions focused on local problems um, and to support the participation of indigenous peoples in dialogues um, that are not led by contracts but truly help to reframe debates on food systems at local, national, and global levels. 
So the key messages that have come out of the dialogue in Peru, um, and now for the Kenya case. So the dialogue in Kenya was facilitated by uh, the uh, Kenya um, Research and Mute. It involved the Kaya elders, the villagers, the area chiefs, government, and also the county governments and Mombasa culture departments and the environment department. And how government policies can support resilient indigenous food systems, agrobiodiversity, and the Rabai biocultural heritage territory, um, which is key protecting indigenous food system, systems. So key messages from the dialogue. Indigenous food systems have been called for resilience to climate change and to COVID-19. They've had very few COVID cases and they believe medicinal plants and indigenous foods have boosted their immunity. The same in, uh, happened in the potato park and many other indigenous communities. Uh, a key message is indigenous crops and land races are more drought and pest tolerant than hybrid crops and they can also be stored for a longer time. I didn't want to go that far. Um, governments need to promote incentives uh, so for communities to, to grow and conserve these orphan crops. Um, deforestation and quarrying or mining have degraded forests and lands in Rabai and are exacerbating the impacts of climate change. Kaya elders um, have limited authority and resources to the forest. So they need support and they, they want com compensation for this work. And with the erosion of indigenous knowledge, the respect of the youth elders is declining. There's also a pressure because this is um, communities quite near Mombasa. So there's pressure for industrial development and often disregard for natural re regulations. So there's a real need to involve reply communities in land use planning decisions and to empower women and youth. They play a key role in, in the transition to sustainable systems. So that's it by way of introduction. Um, I think we'll go straight to um, the dialogue uh, presentation. And we're gonna hear about our indigenous food systems straight from the farmers, and then we'll have a chance for some Q&A with them. So can we go to the potato park now? It's live from the Andes. Uh, are you ready? We can't see you. Hola, buenos hey, días, estamos on. listos. Porque la papa está listo. Cristina, can you hear us? Yes. I can hear, but I can understand. Are they going to start with a ceremony? Yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to start with a Kintuchi ceremony, and then from there we'll begin our presentation. Okay, so go ahead if you want to start, please. Hola. ¿Queréis empezar? Hola. Muy buenos días, eh, eh, compañeros de todos los países del mundo. Acá el Parque de la Papa, desde Perú, desde el Parque de la Papa, estamos haciendo la transmisión para el COD26. Y los compañeros acá del Parque de la Papa, que estamos aquí ya en la transmisión para dar el inicio de nuestra presentación como socios para este COD26. Eh, para empezar, acá tenemos con nuestro compañero Mariano uh, Suta. Eh, que es un sabio andino que nos va a dar, uh, primero para iniciar, eh, nos va a dar uh, para iniciar el, el quintuche, la ceremonia para empezar este evento. So they're going to do a ceremony. He says, uh, welcome everybody um, who's come here in Glasgow to COP26. 
are going to do a ceremony to start the event. Konang zatung no ka napaikukichis ipidang kay dihi na wai kemasi kunata konang inglasa kami sa ikichis kay ko bay tisays niska puridi nyeking rimari pinya inakakti mi no kay ko kay parke la pamanta kay siempre no kay ko ang sestri kumanta pa siya siya ko kay mama tete ko siya siya was kango kay ko kakinto hayuari ko pokuri ko kay Montaña es con aman. Que hay COV-26 y suma a parir con ampa. Pocri con sonches. Con a rato. Con con a quichis para que perimos el quichis. Y a la prueba en quichis. So Mariano has said that he is going to be doing this in order to bring bring luck into fortune and to ask permission for their participation today in the COVID basis. Christine, are you able to hear our translation? Sorry, would you mind a little bit more slowly, Cass, because it's quite hard to hear you. Uh, sure. Thank you. No problem. Konami pokerikusa kei nyau panjis pika jeng hatu montanya apu sompicho kami kainki kei parke liakta lapang liakta kawari kei pokerikusa pokerimuki ina liakta kei ladu pika jeng mama pokera pantilihla ang mampas kei kukak indutam pokerimuki ina liakta kei ladu pika jeng Pulayalang. Entonces, ¿qué hay que intentar? ¿Qué hay para llamar a mamá en Triga y Gusa? So, during his Pintuchi, he has mentioned the, the names of those sacred mountains, uh, which are two principal mountains, and he's, he's asked them for permission, and also a blessing, that they have been so well, uh, and that they're very grateful to be able to participate in the club from here in the Sorry, Cass, so we back. can't hear you here in Glasgow, I'm afraid. Can you speak closer to the microphone, maybe? Sure. Is this any better? So he's added coca leaves, which is a sacred plant. And now he's pouring chicha, which is a sacred beverage from fermented corn. And this is an offering to the Mother Earth, Pachamama. And, and with this offering, they, they hope that the earth is calm and happy. Gracias. Gracias, Orpila. Ilian Karan Noka, Kof 26 Niska Kalari Nanjispa, Alin Suma, Sunko to Paris Nanjispa, Anyai, Orpila, Pane Rikuna, Rikuna. He says, thank you from his heart. He's very happy for the participation today, and he's looking forward to sharing the lessons of their community with all of you. Bueno, gracias. Agradecemos a nuestro compañero Mariano, quien dio el inicio con la ceremonia principal para poder continuar con nuestras actividades, con esta presentación. Enseguida tenemos la presentación de parte de nuestros, eh, las señoras eh, de gastronomía del Parque La Papa, quien nos va a 
eh, presentar los 13 platos que es parte de nuestra alimentación y la seguridad y la soberanía alimentaria. A quien lo vamos a dar eh, el paso eh, de poder explicarnos eh, sobre eh, estos eh, riquísimos platos que está presentando el Parque La Papa. Yeah. So first, thank you to Mariano for his um, performance of this sacred ceremony to start our day. Today we're going to enter into, to begin a presentation with our gastronomy collective, who focus on the preparation of, of native foods uh, that have high nutritional value for their communities. And they're going to talk to us about some of the native crops that they're, they're cultivating here in the potato park. Bueno, que quinoa tan o caico, ya caico. Primero, ta jalpata prepara eco, chimanta. Preparas paico, tan jatajena quichaico, chipetafme. Ustawan, wanuan, chivano caico, prepara eco, chalpata, chiman, cochaico, que quinoa nespata, chimanta tafme, que quinoa nespata, no caico, cocharico, asnata. Yeah, so she has said that the first crop that they'll be speaking about today is quinoa, which is a very important native crop here in the Andes. And she's mentioning that they uh, cultivate it in natural and organic ways, especially using natural fertilizer, which comes from their native animals, uh, including alpaca and llama. Uh, and that they plant in a, a quantity great enough that they're not only able to eat it, but to ensure their seed security for next year's um, planting. And that quinoa is a, a very typical crop grown at what they call the low altitude and the medium altitude, which ranges from about 3,000 meters to 3,800 meters. Yeah. And so she has mentioned some, some particular benefits of quinoa, including that it's very high in protein and that they know that it's equal to eating meat. It's a more, more sustainable source of protein for them and they prefer it to meat. Uh, and that it's especially important to be able to feed their children. Aside from protein, it's also high in vitamins. So they know that this is a really complete food for their family and to assure their family's nutrition. <laughs> Yeah. Next, they're going to talk about a, a crop called tarwi, which comes from the lupin plant. And this, this is our, our partner here, Antonia, from the Gastronomy Collective. Yes. She's going to tell you the story of Tadwi. Anchita 
And so the, the preparation of this plate is, is based entirely on tarwi, which is a very important crop for them here, especially for their children. So the, the first step in the journey of Tarui is to plant it, which they wait until the rainy season. It's, there's no um, artificial uh, watering that happens. Everything is irrigated using only rain. And this used to be very predictable, but with the arrival of climate change, they've seen a lot of difference in when they're able to plant their tarpi. Aside from being an important food crop, this is a really important crop for the health of our soil and our fields. It's a very resistant crop, not only to changes in weather patterns, but also to pests and illnesses, and it also brings nitrogen into the soil. And its resistance to pests and illnesses helps to protect not only the soil, but our other crops. It's often used as a natural barrier or a natural fence in our fields. And tarwi as a nutritional source is very high in protein, like many legumes. And so they know that it's very important for their children to go grow strong and healthy. And that this is knowledge they've had since their, their grandparents passed on from their ancestors. Yeah, gracias. Luego vamos a pasar a la presentación de diversidades de papa nativa a la compañera María. And finally, María is going to speak about the diversity of native potato found here in the potato park. Bueno, Ancha, mi más pequeña y con tu reikuna, papa punja y tachu, seis. No cata, mi cona, explicaris aquí, papa, variedades, papa manta. No hay con ya. No hay con ya, cari, con papa ta. Antes, no hay con ya, cari, con. Ora ya, pero con un cambio climático, me con un no hay con altura, man, y wicha puja. Y que, y papa ta, no hay con ya, cari, con, cuando ya van. Mana, no hay con, que mi cuan, ya, cari, cuando, obi, cuando ya van. Primero, ta, ya, pu, muy, cuche, y manta, ta, me, ya, pues, caigo, asoico, tar, pu, muy, co. Uh, so the potato is one of the most ancient crops we have in the Andes. It was, called, it was domesticated roughly 8,000 years ago. So there's a lot of knowledge about the potato. And they know from their, their grandparents and their ancestors that it used to grow at a much lower elevation. But with climate change, they've seen that the potato is growing higher and higher. And on the one hand, this is worrying. But on the other hand, is, is indicative of the resilience of potato itself. <laughs> And there's a lot of traditional knowledge about the, the ways that we know when it's time to plant potato. For instance, when, when the fox cries, 
uh, it's time to plant the potato. There's lots of ancestral knowledge that came from their grandparents about when to plant, when to harvest. Uh, and this is part of what makes potato such an important crop for them. And there's also a diversity here of uh, wild crop relatives of potato, which help to maintain the diversity of many, many cultivated varieties within their, their fields. In the harvest of potato, it's um, realized entirely using traditional field, uh, traditional tools like the chakitaka, and so there's no carbon emissions from the neither the planting nor the harvest of potato. The selection of potato is uh, an important step in its cultivation including not just seeds, but also potatoes, which get transformed into um, stable crops like chuño and moraya, which can be stored for up to 10 years. And these potatoes aren't, aren't just rich, rich in carbohydrates. They're also rich in antioxidants and vitamins, which help us to stay strong and protected from illness. She's, she's going to open a couple of the potatoes so that we can, can show what native potato looks like inside, which many of them have lots of color. And when they're colorful, they have a lot of antioxidants, which protect them from illness. This one is, is a yellow potato. And you can see that the, the color is very strong. And they have many, many more varieties, but they don't have time to show them all. Eh, bueno, agradecemos a, a nuestros participantes, a las compañeras de gastronomía que nos, eh, que nos han uh, ex, eh, expuesto sobre este eh, platos tan importantes que es para la seguridad de la soberanía alimentaria para nuestros hijos y para las futuras generaciones. Y ahora enseguida vamos a pasar a la parte central, la presentación de la compañera Ricardina, quien nos va a dar las... Looks like we have an internet issue. Let's give it a moment. Exposiciones centrales sobre las. Añay, añay con natura y con una parque pecajuna, cajlata, hay can, cof 26 y pe participación en quiches, añay con natura y con allá para allá Buenos días. A, a warm welcome to everyone who's participating uh, today in the COP26, and we're thankful for our participation. And today, Ricardina is going to talk about climate change here in the Potato Park and both its challenges and opportunities and the innovations that they're developing to confront this difficult situation. Uh, 
so she's mentioning that climate change is not new here. There's a long history of resilience in the Andes and the, the traditional knowledge that they received from, from their grandparents, from their ancestors has helped them to confront what has become an increasingly difficult situation of climate change. And um, she's mentioning that there's also a huge diversity of crops, which in, sort of in conjunction with this traditional knowledge gives them resilience. They're not relying on just a single crop. They have many and they have lots of uh, knowledge and strategies for how they can take care of those many crops. <laughs> Uh, I She's mentioning that climate change has certainly been difficult, but there are certain opportunities they've seen, especially in innovation. Because of climate change, they've uh, studied a lot more of their crops and they've worked hard to uh, create new, new varieties, to create new crosses, particularly of potato. And a lot of this is, is possible because of the range of altitudes and ecological niches, which are cultivated in the Andes. And here in the potato park, they have three principal niches and they've seen a lot of adaptation in terms of altitude as climate change has progressed. <laughs> Samajinaiko alpata ki mihita lianka naiko paki papapi kahlat hako mihipi mana hok mihila tatu no kaiku lianka riku kah alpapa ako mihipi kaspa kambiaiku watama hok mihit hok watama hok mihita kah papapi natah lianka leiko ta hawampi kas alpata samachispa wanulawa naha wila kamshank anchinata liankaiko jimantahme no kaiko kawasheleiko ta yeah, and so she's, she's mentioned three separate adaptations, which are very important for them. The first is the rotation of their fields. This is called muyu, and it, this gives the, the earth a chance to rest. This has become more important as climate change has progressed. She's also mentioning uh, biological and astronom uh, astrological indicators, which is the ways that they know when it's time to plant, when it's time to harvest. And this has allowed them to, to continue uh, to cultivate their fields as well, even as the climate has changed. And finally, she's mentioning the um, diversity of plants which are, are planted, especially based on native diversity and wild plants. Not just wild plants, but wild animals, which are particularly important for the fertilization of soils. <laughs> Mana ima unkui na hamun kasana chichi na hamun jipas kognimpeka ki mihuita wakai chana iku pakangka pineri kuakinta na apangka kasana parana chichi na ima unkui na apangka jipas jipah milang kaiku kini satakapi. Yes. So she's mentioning that there's many different weather conditions that they confront in the Andes, that it's always been an extreme environment. And sometimes this means that it's hail, sometimes they might get very strong rain. And so a strategy which is very essential for assuring their, their food security is to plant at different times of year. And the traditional knowledge uh, that's been passed down to them indicates three, uh, three seasons of planting, an early planting, a middle planting, and a late planting. 
which then also correspond to those harvests. And if one uh, crop fails, the others are, are more likely to succeed. This is an important part of their food security. Yeah, so she's mentioning an experiment that they've been doing for many years, which uses transect plots. And this has allowed them to um, ad adapt their potato based on, on the evidence they're gathering about climate change. And that this is a really important example for them of indigenous-led investigation that's allowing for, for resilience and adaptation to climate change. So, um, Cass, can you wrap up, please? Because we're yeah, running she, out of time. Thank Rica you. Ricardina is going to give a quick conclusion, and that, that will be the, the end of our Potato Park segment. Yeah, that and so she said that um, this, this system she's described, this indigenous agricultural system, it allows them to assure their own food security so that in their own storehouses, they have a very wide variety of crops. And that as a part of these dialogues, one of the actions they realized was sharing over a thousand tons of potato seed with other indigenous communities in the Cusco region so that other communities can count on that same amount of food security. And they see their work here not being just for themselves or just for Cusco, but being for the whole country and indeed the whole world. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you so much to the ladies from the gastronomy group in, in the Potato Park, isn't it beautiful? We need to move to Kenya now, so um, uh, we'll come to some questions afterwards, but we've, we're a bit short of time. Vamos a ir a Kenya ahora, pero luego tendremos unas preguntitas. Muchísimas gracias. Yeah, thanks to everyone in, in the hall there. We're, we're excited that we were able to share. These are the Kaya elders at the front. Please go ahead, Leila. We can't hear you at the moment. Hello, can you hear us? Uh, Christina? Yes, so can I can hear, hear now. Okay. Uh, so hello everyone and uh, welcome to Rabai Cultural Landscape where we have uh, members of uh, Rabai community. And uh, uh, they're going to present a traditional uh, prayer. Then that will be followed by uh, showcasing of their various foods and then uh, a food uh, ceremony and uh, they'll uh, finish up with a traditional dance that is normally uh, performed to celebrate good harvest. So welcome uh, one of the traditional uh, Kaya elders, uh, Mr. Hare, is going to lead us in uh, traditional prayers. 
then uh, the ceremony will continue with the blessing of the bounty harvest. Then the ladies will showcase some of the staple foods that are commonly consumed in Rabai community, and then that will be followed by the dance. So welcome everyone. Uh, Mr. Harry? Aya, Moses Milai. Okay, so that was a short uh, traditional uh, prayer from Mr. Hare, just to welcome members and uh, to seek blessings from the ancestors ahead of our meeting and uh, ceremony. So the next bit is uh, traditional blessings from uh, uh, Mr. Hare will continue the traditional blessings. Welcome, Mr. Bayer. Similarly, <laughs> that's uh, the traditional uh, blessing that is uh, conducted using uh, palm wine and it's a uh, means of appeasing the ancestors. So after that, uh, So after this uh, ceremony of uh, blessing the harvest, the elders are normally given a token of appreciation, which is uh, palm wine. So the elders are going to consume the palm wine as a, as a token of appreciation from members of the community. <laughs> So the elders are consuming uh, palm wine, which is a token of appreciation. Okay. <laughs> So the palm wine is uh, harvested from the coconut uh, uh, tree and uh, it's normally consumed as I mentioned earlier as a token of appreciation to the elders and it's common that uh, palm wine is used to celebrate during all uh, ceremonies that uh, celebrate good happenings, like uh, after bounty harvest, 
or before conducting traditional uh, rituals in the sacred uh, Kaya forest. So uh, thank you so much for that. So next we are going, uh, next we'll have the ladies uh, showcase the traditional foods of the Rabai community. So the ladies are going to showcase some of the traditional foods of the Rabai community. My name is Asha Juma from Rabai community. Nikaanza na yule Miriam kule wa mwisho. Mauna. Mauna pale ana kinu na mchi yuatwanga mahindi. So I'll begin by showcasing uh, uh, Mauna who is uh, pounding uh, dry maize in readiness for preparation of uh, maize flour which is a common uh, staple food among the community. So the maize is dried, pounded, and then crushed using traditional uh, stone. And then the flour is uh, mixed with uh, boiling water to prepare paste, which is commonly known as ugali in uh, the community. And it's the most commonly consumed food in the community. Na ile nafata pale ni kikapu, kikapu watu natafutia mboga shambani, Boga kama mchunga, mnavu, na mchicha. Mboga hizi watu natuwa kutuma shambani, ni mboga zenye nguvu sana, na tunazipenda. So next, uh, Mauna is uh, holding uh, traditional tray and basket. So the tray is mostly used for winnowing of uh, grains to clean them after harvest. And uh, just that's what she's uh, showcasing, the winnowing uh, process. Then the basket uh, down is used to carry uh, food crops after harvest in the farm. Na inayofatia ni nazi. Nazi pia watu natumia kwa kweka kwa mboga na kwa chakula. The next one is a coconut uh, fruit, which is uh, very common in the community. Uh, the palm tree is uh, very common for its palm wine, while uh, the fruits are commonly used to sweeten uh, stews uh, while being uh, prepared, and it's a very important delicacy in the community. Inafatia ni chungu. Chungu ni chombo ambacho watu na pikia, mboga, sima, chakula yote, watu na tunia iyo. Do yote ya kitamani. So then we have the traditional uh, pot. Uh, Asha is just uh, emphasizing that uh, the traditional pot is uh, used to prepare traditional uh, meals. It's made of clay, so it cooks faster and it also preserves the heat as well as the taste of the food. So they really uh, take it as a very important uh, tool in the kitchen. Inao fatia ni fuko. Fuko na kata. Hii huwa tunachotea maji mtoni wakati wa mvua wakati wa kiangazi hiyo ndio kitu tunachotea maji So uh, what she is holding is uh, it's called uh -huh. kaha in uh, Rabai language it's used to fetch water from the pot that is uh, down there and that pot is used as a traditional uh, fridge it pulls drinking water and it's very common in all households within the community. Na hii ni kunde. Kunde ni chakula ambayo tuaipenda sana na iko kwenye kikahana ama kirobo. So Asha is showcasing cowpeas. Cowpeas is one of the staple uh, crops in Rabai community. It's also uh, found within uh, Kaya Forest, the wild uh, cowpeas variety that the community have been using to 
improve the genetic traits of the of the improved uh, varieties and it's commonly cooked at household level it's very rich in uh, uh, nutritional value and it also helps to avoid mal malnutrition in children na inayofuatia ni mhogo mhogo kwa jina kileso mhogo ni mzuri sana na ndo chakula tunayopenda ina nguvu sana huwa tunapika tukule hiyo peke yake waweza kuchemsha ama waweza kuweka nazi ama uchanganye na kunde tunaita kishongo uh, that is a cassava crop cassava is also a staple uh, crop it's a tuba that is commonly consumed by the rabai community and it's used to prepare kishombo which is a very common meal within a community kishombo is a mixture of cowpeas and cassava cooked together and pounded together inaofuatia ni muhama tunaita muhama muhama ni chakula kizuri sana muhama wa tunachanga tunachanganya na mahindi na muhogo tunasaga unga tunapika ugali huwa ni tamu sana so the two are uh, uh, sorghum and millet. Sorghum and uh, millet are commonly used to prepare flour. Uh, they are combined together with maize, uh, crushed, and then used to prepare a traditional meal called uh, jora or uh, ugali. Sasa hii ndo chakula yenyewe tunayotengeza kutokana na muhogo, nazi na kunde. So that's the chishombo. Chishombo as I've mentioned earlier is a mixture of the cooked cowpeas, cooked uh, cassava that is uh, mixed together. It's a very precious uh, food amongst the Rabai community very nutritious and has a lot of energy that gives them uh, energy to do heavy manual work including uh, farm work thank you. thank you so much so uh, next we are going to have a traditional uh, dance teller that is normally performed uh, when uh, celebrating a bounty harvest of food so we welcome you to enjoy the cella dance and immediately after that we'll have the uh, key highlights from the food uh, policy dialogues from uh, members of the community.
harvest by members of the community. So next we'll have the final uh, highlights, uh, which are the key messages for COP26 from members of the Rabai community. So Lennox will do the presentation, I'll do the translation. Uh, Sante, Sante Lela. Uh, zile ambazo ikonazo hapa ni tatu na ya kwanza inaangazia moja kwa moja kusu swalazima la wale wakulima wadogo wadogo waweze kuchukua mfumo huu wa biocultural heritage uh, territory ili waweze kusaidia katika ku, uh, kukinga mazingira na wakati wanapofanya hivyo basi iwe moja kwa moja wanaweza kuyatunza mazingira na waweza kupata riski kwa kuweza kufanya hivyo na hii itaweza kusaidia pia vile vile kuweza kupiga mbiu na kusaidia kuweza kuzi kuzikuza zile mimea ambazo ni zinaenda kupotea um, so my name is uh, Lennox and uh, we as a community have uh, four major highlights, uh, key messages for the COP26. Uh, and one is that farmers should adopt uh, uh, the biocultural heritage uh, territory approach as a model to enhance their resilience and adaptation to climate change. And also because the uh, biocultural uh, heritage uh, territory approach. Uh, Sorry, Leila, could you speak up a bit? Could you put the microphone right next to your mouth, please? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the biocultural heritage uh, territory approach is key because it promotes uh, growing of uh, high value of and uh, crops. So that's very important to the community. And for that reason, uh, the smallholder farmers should adopt this approach. Uh, ya pili ni kwamba wale wakulima wadogo wadogo waweze kupata nafasi ya kukatika ngazi ya kufanya maamuzi ili wanapofanya hivyo wanahusishwa moja kwa moja kwenye kulinda na kutunza um, mashamba yao ili yasiweze kuingiliwa zile sehemu ambazo ni za ukulima zikabaki kuwa za ukulima zile ambazo ni sehemu uh, za kuweka makampuni zikao ni sehemu za makampuni na zile sehemu za watu wanaishi watu wakaweze kuishi na tukifanya hivyo tutakuwa tuna tunalinda utamaduni wetu tunachunga mashamba yetu ambayo tunaluma tunalima vyakula vyetu hivi vya kiasili na kukinga mbali waharibifu ambao wanatatiza uh, mimea yetu ya kiasili ama vyakula vyetu katika mashamba the small uh, holder farmers should also be involved in uh, all levels of decision uh, making including land use planning and management at the local level this will help uh, address challenges of uh, industrial development in uh, inappropriate uh, areas and it will also ensure that the bio agrobiodiversity rich areas are uh, preserved for agrobiodiversity conservation na ya tatu mfumo huu wa kuweza kusimamia uh, mashamba yetu ambao unapatikana katika biocultural heritage territory basi ukaweze kuwaleta karibu kena mama pamoja na vijana wakahusishwe kamilifu kwenye swala zima la kuweza uh, kuitunza uh, misitu yetu na kutunza mashamba yetu na tutafanya hivyo basi tutafikia ile lengo la kuweza kuwa na usalama wa chakula the youth and women should be actively involved in all levels of agricultural uh, production processes and this will uh, ensure that uh, they are sustainable food systems because they are very active and key uh, components and uh, stakeholders in the process of food production. Na mwisho kabisa nikimalizia mfumo wetu wa kiasili ambao uh, unawalenga moja kwa moja wazee wetu wakaya ni mfumo ambao ulikuwa ni wa kimsingi sana na ulikuwa unatusaidia kwa mahali pakubwa kuweza kutunza rasilimali zetu za mashamba pamoja na za msitu hivyo uh, ingekuwa ni vizuri zaidi kwamba wazee hawa wakaweze kupewa nguvu ama mfumo huu kaweze kupewa nguvu ili iwe rahisi kwao kuweza kupitisha habari hizi kwa uh, kwa jamii na kutoa kizazi kimoja hadi kingine na hii uh, ingekuwa ni vyema tuweze kutambua nguvu yao na jukumu walilonalo katika usimamizi 
wetu wakiasilia na uh, hii tukifanya hivyo itaweza kushikamana moja kwa moja kwenye kuhakikisha kwamba sheria zetu za kitamaduni na uh, sheria na kanuni zetu za kitamaduni pamoja na kuweza kutekeleza yale majukumu yao ambayo kwa sasa yanaonekana kwamba ni yako ni mapungufu zaidi yataweza kupata nguvu hii ni muhimu sana kwenye kuhakikisha kwamba tumeweza kuafikia lengo letu la usalama wa chakula na muendelezo so traditional governance systems that is uh, an example is the Kaya council of elders are very important in uh, natural resource management and uh, conservation of agrobiodiversity at the community level because uh, these systems are entrenched in cultural uh, values of the community they are highly respected and they are also easily accessible to the local population so they should uh, go a long way in complementing the traditional uh, the modern governance uh, systems which uh, currently enforcement of these uh, modern governance systems are very weak and uh, to fill this gap we need to build the capacity of traditional uh, governance systems and appreciate the important role in natural resource uh, management at the local level and uh, so that's uh, the final message from uh, the community asante uh, sana kwa kuisikiliza thank you so much for listening to me so uh, karibu can... asante sana nasema <laughs> karibu <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. That uh, brings us to the end of the presentation from uh, Rabai community. Thank you very much, Leila, and uh, the elders and the women for that fantastic presentation. Um, Diana, do we have a five extra minutes? Okay, fantastic. So. Alejandro, we have 10 extra minutes. So should we take a few questions now and then do the declaration in five minutes? That sounds anybody... good. Okay, great. Does anybody have any questions for the communities in Peru or in Kenya? Uh, either in the room or online or in Peru or Kenya, you can ask each other questions if you, if you would like to. Okay, we, we have a question here. Does it, do we have a microphone for the lady? Thank you. And please say which community it's for. Thank you very much to both communities for the, for the beautiful presentations. Um, they were inspiring. I wanted to, to ask a question actually to, the Ken, to Kenya. Um, what kind of experiences have they seen with climate change? What are they doing to mitigate it? And what's most concerning for them? Uh, Mr. Mzomba will uh, answer that. Hello. Katika mabadiliko ya hali ya hewa hata sisi tunatasizika sijui huko kwenu kama kuko vipi kwa sababu wakati tukilima mara mvua inakatika kwa sababu climate change. Sasa tunatatizika kwa hayo ndio ambayo tunatupa changamoto kubwa. Sijui huko kwenu muko vipi. Suluhu sijui tutafanya nini manake sasa climate change inatusumbua. Uh, Mr. Mzomba. Uh, Mr. Mzomba mentioned that uh, the rainfall uh, patterns have uh, changed tremendously over time and that has had a very negative effect on uh, the agricultural production. He mentioned that at times they plant uh, crops and then midway there is no rainfall and they experience major crop losses. So that has been a major challenge to them. Leila, could you make sure the microphones aren't close together? There's a lot of feedback noise at your end, so we can't hear very well. Did people hear okay. the re response? Yeah? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. 
so you, you had the response or do, do you want us to repeat Christina fine. it's fine they, they heard it I didn't hear it I think I need a hearing test but they did so that's good um, any other questions anyone online or uh, any of the communities would like to ask a question Okay, in that case, we have time for another one. There's another in the room here in Glasgow. And, and please say who you are and what your mission is. Thank you. Okay, hi, I'm Martina, I'm from Mexico, and I, my organization is called Colectivo Amasijo. And I wanted to ask a question for Peru. Um, and it's, does they still use the um, terraces to grow a potato? Ok, o lo, lo puedo preguntar en español. Um, para Perú, bueno, no, no, ok, para Perú. Um, si ¿sí siguen usando las terrazas para crecer papa. Bueno, que hay preguntas, gracias por la pregunta. Kay terasa anda ni sepekan nukai ko kajang kesai ko papa ta abas ta pasta sarata wampas kay pata pata mana terasa taka ruai kunalian ju aswan pas terasa ruai ka nyau pahman tepaja sis kata pi kay lah alpay ko kajin jaga abuloi ko mami tay ko riki cuaran ko yaci cuaran ko alpata uraman ta hawam kutichita entonces kay pi alpa konservai te yajai ko porque que hay alpaca, no hay que pagar con el guajnico, que es en dos tierras, con mana, ahora hay más erosión, ganando mona y cucho. He's mentioned that, yes, they do still use terrace farming, in particular for crops like corn, though sometimes it's still useful for potato. And he's also mentioned that terraces are important in the management of soil itself, because when erosion happens, which is inevitable in mountains, they have to return the soil, which has has come down, which is now in the low part, back to the the highlands. And so terraces are also used as a both an intervention against erosion and a solution when erosion does happen. Entonces, Jamie, no hay no principal labor ni co que hay cora con la casa en Chaypas manan carne y cucho aswan pues que upa con la cora con la chamisa con la ta aswan pues mucho que hay habas tulu con la ta pas entonces que hay guano mantuco entonces compost Hina ka indos uywa wano tapos apay ko sapang ka muy mang kanchwa taman tatag me muy kang kay chakras o papal yang kanay ko. And so he's mentioned that the the soil at different altitudes has very different nutritional benefits, and that part of the the sort of main work of creating terraces is evenly distributing the nutrition of the soil amongst the different altitudinal ranges, and that part of this is also realized through the crop rotation system, the muyus. And so I think that the short answer is yes, they still use terraces. And then Mariano has given some great context about kind of the, the science of their terraces. Okay. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias, compañeros, en el Parque de la Papa. Dice que es increíble lo que hacéis. Okay, I was just saying thank you very much. Um, does anybody uh, from Kenya in Rabai, would anybody like to ask a question to Glasgow or to Peru? Yes, there's a question. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Harry asked a question to the uh, Andes uh, team. He's asking whether uh, they have traditional attire 
for traditional elders. So question number one is, uh, do our colleagues from uh, Andes have uh, traditional elders who oversee natural resource uh, management and do they have traditional clothing? And then secondly, do they have traditional drinks? Because in uh, Rabai community, palm wine is uh, used while conducting all forms of traditional uh, rituals and ceremonies. So is there a similar one for our colleagues in uh, Andes? Did you pass or do you want me to translate? Uh, compañeros en, en, en el P, eh, hay una cuestión de uno de los eh, sabios eh, en, en Kenia. Pregunta que si vosotros tenéis eh, sabios y, eh, mayores, eh, y si ellos tienen un traje especial y si ellos beben un, eh, bebidas especiales tradicionales. Enten, ¿Entendéis? Sí, eh, Cristina, I think, I think we've, we've got the gist of the question. Uh, so we're going to have a, a community member here respond. Uh, bueno, hay que cuando pone con alguien un punche que le ha pasado aquí, se ha hecho aquí, ni allá está, pero no punche de maricuita, aparte chanchis, hacha cuimanta, no caray maimosa, alguien no cae que parque de la papa peca, siempre que suma, hacha no cae que churacuico y maricuita se ha hecho tiempo, en caso de que no se ha hecho curanco y no cae que cascallanta, mantinicheico, ruacheico, en la tajepa, generación una mampas, partiseico. Hinaleta no caico, cachep, achataca, my hinata, respitaico, valorai, cochep, achacuinico, to warmi pas caripas. A bueno, no caico, cochep, achacunata, ruacuico, no caico, propio, maquicuan, a animal cuna, uivas caico, wilmawan, hinaleta, to caico pas, instrumento conataps, ruacuico, animal manta, such a conamanta, pacha. Yeah, so he's mentioning that um, what you see all of them wearing today is the traditional dress, uh, which is worn not just by elders, but by all members of the community. And that this traditional uh, form of clothing is a very important way that they uh, both express and continue their traditional knowledge. They make the clothing themselves with fiber that comes from their animals, in particular sheep and alpaca. Uh, and they, they teach it to their children as well. And that this is a very important practice for men and for women and for young people, for middle-aged people, for, for elders in the community. Uh, and there are multiple forms of traditional dress, which are used for different kinds of events. And so, for instance, there's a, a different dress, which would be used in, in something like a wedding. There's different uh, dress, which is used for, for traditional rituals. And the, the dress that they wear today is, is kind of the most commonly used. It's a day-to-day a -day form of traditional dress. <laughs> Pasaska hinat animal kunaman, pasaska hinada yang aini kuman, yapa i wasi kuna pas yapa cai kunaman, no kai pasas kruas kakasha cai mahina. Pasa kui ni kumana akna kumuliach. And that in order to uh, perform something like a traditional ritual, like they started the day with um, today, the kinfuji, one must always be using traditional dress. And so it's important that everybody in the community has their own. Uh, it's part of, as you see, everybody's a little bit different, and it's because they belong to them, they were made by them. Yeah, well, we'll end with that. Oh, Okay, Cass, have you finished now? Because we need to move on to Alejandro's last 
presentation of the uh, Food and Climate Declaration. Yeah, Christine, yeah, we're, we're happy to um, move on. We're, we're sure we could, could talk more. Okay, thank you so much. Know that there's time restrictions. Uh, thank you so much to the communities in, in Peru and Kenya for sharing their enormous wisdom with us. Muchisimas gracias. Um, and we're going to finish. <laughs> okay, we're now going to have um, a few minutes to finish to hear from Alejandro Argumedo, who's the... Um, the, the person, indigenous visionary who supported the P Potato Park establishment, and he coordinates an international network of mountain indigenous peoples. Um, so over to you, Alejandro. Thank you, Christina. Um, and uh, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. And greetings our sisters and brothers in, in Kenya and in Peru. As usual, um, these types of celebrations take a lot of time. Um, both communities, the Rubai community and the Potato Park are members of the international network of mountain indigenous peoples. And, uh, you know, we are very happy to, to join this, uh, um, this dialogue. Um, you know, Scotland is also a mountainous area, so there's um, a kind of uh, nice um, link there. Uh, you know, reminding that uh, mountains um, are not just um, a key centers of origin of most of the crops that feed the world, but also the areas as Christina have uh, uh, underlined that um, are like a most impacted after um, small islands by climate change, but also are places where, as you see in innovation, creativity, and uh, um, visionary thinking is always um, very dynamic. <clears throat> and um, um, the uh, IMIP network has been um, following um, the COP uh, over the years now. It has um, at, um, at least, um, um, uh, you know, a few dozen of uh, community members uh, spanning 14 countries, mountainous countries around the world. And uh, the role of the Secretariat is to engage on uh, monitoring and <clears throat> um, bringing together uh, voices uh, in a way that we can reframe this debate on climate change and food. Um, we uh, <clears throat> have also um, follow up uh, the uh, recent Food System Summit uh, and uh, of course, uh, strongly um, uh, contested uh, its corporate um, leadership and how um, countries are kind of being um, brought into this uh, new approach that uh, actually um, is taking or is, is changing the way the UN operates and that's very much a concern. The um, IMIP uh, put together this um, um, a declaration focusing on food and climate issues. I just posted the full declaration in uh, in the chat um, uh, <clears throat> in the chat section of this um, uh, of this Zoom, and uh, um, I think I, uh, the reading um, uh, of the declaration is is going to uh, be more uh, useful than me repeating it, but I just want to highlight a couple of points that uh, for us are very important. Um, the need uh, to um, change this industrial food system and create a, a, a more biodiverse and resilient system that is anchored in uh, people's experiences and lived experiences of thousands of years of care and relationship with the land in different types of 
um, food producing habitats where indigenous peoples live. As Christina said, I think indigenous peoples can contribute greatly, inspire a new food system and work with the rest of uh, society in creating a more um, a sustainable world with a regenerative type of agriculture. Um, but this has to be done with full respect of the rights of indigenous peoples. It's something that we emphasize over and over again because uh, the situation in our countries is dire. Uh, since the um, um, Paris Agreement was signed, this over of 1,101 land defenders, most of the indigenous peoples that have been killed for defending land, seeds, uh, the food systems um, from uh, industrial expansion of oil palm or um, you know, extractive industries that uh, are taking over the land. So we require that uh, the rights and particularly the land rights are, and, and, and rights to life are uh, uphold. And in that we, we need your support. Uh, we need to work together so this uh, can be respected. Um, and the a final point here, and it's one that we've been hearing over and over uh, from the Glasgow Corp is these pledges and uh, a huge money that's being thrown supposedly in the stopping forest degradation or deforestation and uh, meaning that, uh, you know, stopping industrial agriculture. And we know that, uh, you know, that's a, uh, you know, a very well uh, tuned that uh, in each cop they sing and uh, it never materializes. So I think the solution is in, um, in the field, is in the, in, the, in the ground with communities, with indigenous peoples, with women, with fisher folk, um, with those people that actually are working with their hands and producing nutritious and uh, delicious food for all of the world. Um, I know I don't have much time, but uh, just to uh, reaffirm that the International Network of Mountain Indigenous Peoples is happy to join you and happy to work with you. And uh, our solidarity is one that's based on reciprocity, not just among humans, but also with rest of other beings that also have rights and require um, a, the same type of care and um, <clears throat> you know future as people do. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Take it over. Thank you so much, Alejandro. I've just given out the declaration to people here so they can read it in their own time. And please do give it to any decision makers you know, <laughs> if, if you know any. Um, so I'm just gonna close now because we're really out of time, but I think the key message from that has been protecting indigenous people's land rights is really critical for climate resilience, climate mitigation, and for changing our, our food systems. The, um, uh, low carbon and uh, equitable. So thanks everybody. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And thank you so much to Alejandro, Potato Park communities, the Rabai communities, the Kefri, and also to Nourish Scotland and to the rest of Brazilians for hosting us today. Thank you. For joining us today and just as a reminder we have a continuation of this fork to farm dialogue presentations on Wednesday and um, I'm just trying to find the time
Uh, but we will be hearing from the from Scotland, so you can hear a bit more about the case studies from Scotland, and they are from um, from six thirty until uh, eight thirty. If you would like to join us, it's again open to the public, so invite your friends, invite anyone. You're all very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.